In this tutorial of the Android Image Viewer application, we're going to set up panning for across the image once it's in a zoomed in state. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials, my name's Nigel. Okay. Normally, if you're zoomed in an image, you might want to scroll or pan across to another position inside the inside your screen, inside the image. Um, in the previous tutorial, you can't really do that unless you've got two fingers on and it's not really uh, a good way of doing it. So in this tutorial, we're going to set up the scrolling across. Um, I did have a bit of problems just finding good documentation, good information in the internet on implementations for this. So this method's not perfect, but it can just give you insight on how to pan across. Um, I did use one website tutorial, and I'll put a link in the description there, probably a link, uh, yeah, a link in the description of where I got most of my information from, and I did have to make a few slight little changes at the end, but. I decided just to base it basically on this guy's tutorial. He spent a long time and had a number of contributors commenting in with good good fixes. So I decided to use that. But again, it's not perfect, and I think I would advise that you use maybe a, a pinch zoom library if you were doing development for this. But this does give you a good start and introduction to panning across a zoomed in image. Okay, let's let's make a start. Okay, so from the previous tutorial, we were introduced to this on-touch event here. I didn't really go into any detail, but on-touch event, you can monitor a number of different types of events from, from um, that will represent dragging or scrolling and such as that. So we're going to basically listen to those events and put them into a number of states and then decide whether or not we want to act on that touch event. Okay, so I'm going to put a switch in here. Okay, and what we're, what we're listening for is what's called action events. So to get that, we can get action. And I'm also going to pass what we call a, a mask for these action events. So in other words, I only want to listen for action events. To do that, we get provided with this action mask. So we filter out everything else. Okay, so there's going to be a number of conditions I want to listen to here. Let's start off with the first one. And it'll be action down, and this will sort of represent a action down will represent that we're going to probably do a pan. And I'm going to listen to three more actions, so let's paste those. Okay, so next event will probably be action up. And Next event is going to be an action move. This is where we're going to do our work for calculating how much we're panning across. And the last one is a listen for um, an actual pinch zoom. And this is going to be what we call a pointed down event. Okay, now that we've got those three events there, we're going to set up a simple state condition. Basically, we want to know whether or not we're in a nothing state or a panning state or a zoom state. So if we go up here, I need to add some members just to represent those different states. Use int for that. And first one to say none. It's not a state that we're interested in. Okay, let's do the next state we'll just call pan. So we're basically we're basically recognizing this state as panning across the zoomed in image. And we'll call the last one 
as a zoom state. Make that two unique value. And we want something to hold all those different states to, so we know which state we're in. So, so I'll just call this a member. It's uh, event state. Something like that. Okay, so let's go back into on take, touch and initialize our states. So action down we're going to recognize as a pan state. Okay, so. So let's call event state equals pan. And action up will be none. And action move will do nothing there for the moment. Don't need to assign that state. Pointed down, we're going to set as a. Pointed down, we're going to set as a um, pinch zoom state. Okay, so. Now we've set up our states, we're now in a position where we can gather some values for when we first touch the screen. Think of those as the touching coordinates. Um, if you're dragging your finger across or movements on, the, on your fingers, we can return back the, um, the destination values as well. And that information there is going to, especially for panning, calculate how much your fingers moved across the display. So let's set up some more members here. And these are all going to be float. These and these are all going to be floats. I call one start to x. Let's make that equal to zero as a default value. And we'll do one for start start y. And we'll call the next one translate. So it represents that values have changed. Let's make that translate x. So we've got these values. Let's go back into such event and start setting them up. So the finger going action down is a pan event. So we're just going to give us some start values there. So let's go for start x. And from that we can call the event get x. And we'll do the same thing for y. So we've got the start values now. Now when we go to the action event move, we can actually get the, get the values from a finger move and subtract that from our start coordinates and that will give us the um, calculation of the movement. X and X and Y. Okay, so we'll go in, translate X. And this is basically event get x and then subtract it from our start value and we need to do the same thing for y okay so we need to filter through events that are happening we only want to act on a pinch or a uh, pan. So let's put in a statement in here. And first thing we want to check for is, is, is the member event state is a pan. And also, if we're in a zoomed in state, we don't want to pan if we're currently just looking at the whole default view in its original size. So 
check to see if the scale factor is not equal to and we do have a member for this which will be min min zoom okay so only act on if we zoomed in do a pan here and it's a pan event and also act on our we want to act on our pinch zoom So, so we've got basically a pan or a zoom. We want to call and validate, redraw on our display. And we also want to call the on measure. So we need to request a layout because we might have to resize our image view. Okay, now these commands do have a bit of an overhead to them and we are calling them in one other place, which is in the on scale here. So let's just comment these out. We don't really need them but now. Okay, so we've now worked out our values. We've now filtered whether or not we want to listen to a pinch and a zoom. So let's go to on draw down here. And from the previous tutorial, I set up a scale with the focus points actually coordinating where our fingers were. We're going to revert back to the original call here because this code will get in the way of our panning measurements. Okay, so we'll go back to this code here. Now we can actually do what we call a translate, which is moving the um, display screen across to the right position in our zoomed in image view, which in effect is panning. So it's called canvas.translate. We're going to pass in our translate x. We need to divide that by the scale factor to keep everything in proportion and scale. And we'll do the same thing for y. And that should be it. So let's try running this code and see what happens. Okay, let's record the display so we can all see what's going on. Stick the bowl of ramen. Hold my thumb in. Okay, let's zoom in. Nothing's going to happen there. We're filtering out a drag if it's just in a normal full view of state. So let's zoom in now. So we're zoomed in. Okay, we've still got the um, boundary issues. So let's try dragging. Okay, we are now dragging. There is funniness when I first touch my finger on, but once I drag, drag happens up, down, left, right. So we do have dragging, but we do have issues. I know of these issues, and we will address them in the following tutorial. But this tutorial is just basically how to get your values on a drag and display them on the screen, which is what we've got happening here. Okay, so that concludes this episode. What we learnt here is we got more involved in the on-touch event and how to listen to different touch events, such as action down, action up, and um, pointed down, which was basically representing whether or not we're in a pan or a zoom state. We also wanted to listen on onto those events only act on a pan or a zoom event and we've done some calculations where we had to start values from one event and worked out the final movement values from the action move event and worked out our translate values there and eventually we passed those values into the on draw method using the canvas translate we could move across the canvas to a different part of the image acting out a panning event as such and at the end of this, we did acknowledge there are at least a couple of issues there, which I will look at in the following tutorial to this. Um, one was just with the boundaries being higher or left of the image. And the other one is when you first touch your finger, the image may move as well. So it's not saving the original location of where our finger is being touched on. So we will address those in the following tutorial. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. If you want to get notified of the following tutorial or any of the other tutorial series I'm working on, click on that subscribe button just down below me. And surrounding me are my social media accounts. So if you want to keep up to date with all the news and events happening in the world of mobile application tutorials, 
um, by all means visit any of my social media accounts and don't forget just above me is a link to my homepage as well my website and all these tutorials are on that site as well you can view the tutorials on that site but you've also got um, descriptions of all the code changes and you can actually get the code from github the information's up in the website postings there as well anyway that's it for this one bye for now